Thanks. Great to be here today. Sorry I'm not from Georgetown. I'm just a Fletcher guy. So, you know. Um, in any case. Uh, right, my topic uh, is soft power with respect to the Obama administration and its impact on uh, counterterrorism. And I think uh, Dr. Pilar made a very good point uh, just before leaving uh, about how we don't really have a good grip on the root causes of terrorism. I mean, presumably the things that we're doing overseas in the war on terrorism or the contingency operation or whatever you want to call it, uh, presumably what we're doing is not just stamping out the symptoms but going for the cause so that one day this war will be over. Um, but the reason why soft power is important, even though we don't fully understand the root causes, uh, is because hard power clearly isn't the answer to this problem. I mean, you can't send an armored division chasing after a terror cell. You know, uh, bombers uh, aren't really effective unless you happen to have the terrorist, you know, in one place where you can find them. Um, that'll take care of one of the symptoms anyway. So, meaning the terrorist. So, you know, since that type of power isn't going to work, that points us towards looking at other solutions um, like soft power things. With respect to the Obama administration, what we've seen is uh, a continuation, in some cases, of soft power approaches that were pioneered by the Bush administration. In other cases, they've broken from some of the things the Bush team was doing and pursuing other courses. So I'd like to just mention some of those uh, as I go. Uh, for example, a continuing thing, attacking terrorist finances, an important soft power aspect. It's been extremely effective. It was effective before. It still is in terms of uh, interdicting interdicting the lifeblood of the terrorists. Unfortunately, it's a very difficult thing to measure because we know how much we can interdict, but we don't know how much is out there because this is all underground uh, money that's uh, traded in diamonds and uh, done on the black market and things like that. So a successful approach, but of uh, indeterminate uh, scale. Another thing, uh, expanding the list of terrorist organizations that the State Department keeps. And it's not just a list to say that we have a list. When an organization goes on that list, it opens up whole new areas of endeavor that the U.S. government can employ to try to make life miserable for those people, whether it's going after their supporters or going after their people or making it difficult for them to travel or things like that. So that's something that the Obama administration has done. Um, increasing international cooperation with training and education for counter-terrorists. There have been many new programs bringing people to the United States uh, who are active in counter-terrorism in their home countries, whether in law enforcement or the military or intelligence, as a means of promoting uh, relationships, promoting dialogues, best practices, and so forth, and allowing people to know how other countries interoperate, allowing our people to know how, you know, what the problems that other countries face and how they operate in their country. So that's been very useful. The use of humanitarian disaster assistance has been something we've done. Uh, the flood relief in Pakistan, for example. And this is effective, at least in the short term, in improving the image of the United States, wherever this happens to be. Uh, unfortunately, the long-term impact hasn't been as great. Uh, earthquake relief in Pakistan, for example, uh, led to a momentary uh, flowering of a lot of pro-American sentiment, which then, you know, a few months later quickly faded. What have you done for us lately? Well, have another earthquake, and then we'll come in and help you. Um, I mean, that's the kind of thing you can't really plan for. And actually, since it's a disaster, it's not really a good thing. It's not something you want to promote. But when it does happen, the United States is there to help out and take care of it. Um, economic development programs, when they work, uh, these have been good things. There have been a series in the Washington Post lately uh, for those of you who are visiting, you might want to uh, check it out, on the failure of some of our development programs in Iraq and Afghanistan, because once we develop them, they're great, and then we hand them over, and then for various reasons, they just collapse. So, um, you know, they're good while they last, but usually they last only as long as the money lasts, which is usually only as long as the U.S. is there. And there have been other things. Uh, one of our uh, questioners mentioned beer and cigarettes, for example. Uh, you know, we don't have anything that they want. Well, interesting point, in Al-Anbar province in Iraq, uh, when Al-Qaeda was active there, they uh, banned cigarettes because it was anti-Islamic, according to them. Well, everybody there smokes. So this was a, a 
big faux pas for Al Qaeda. It made them a lot of enemies. Well, our guys were out there handing out cigarettes, you know, saying, "Hey, you know, the 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 terrorists want you not to smoke. We're happy to have you smoke." And so we were using cigarettes as a means of promoting, uh, you know, at least goodwill, if nothing else, uh, promoting smoking, I suppose. But uh, the point is that the the sheiks and other people in Al Anbar. Uh, it's a minor thing, but they love their cigarettes. And Al-Qaeda was saying, you can't smoke. And we were saying, not only can you smoke, we'll give you your smokes. So in that sense, that was uh, the use of cigarettes in a soft power context. Counterterrorism. Interesting. Just thought I'd throw that out there since we were getting into Avatar. Um, anyway, those are all areas of continuity in which the Obama administration has either continued or expanded things that the Bush administration had been doing. Uh, in some ways, though, uh, the Obama administration has broken from practices of the Bush era, uh, mainly trying to improve the image of the United States that was damaged during that period. 